I've never been a big fan of this uh, air conditioning system on the XJ6. It's kind of neat the way it works with having a servo drive and everything, but uh, it's not really very dependable in that the little amplifier thingy always tends to fail. It, and the uh, uh, park it outside on a sunny day in the wintertime, come back, start the car, and you got the air conditioning on full blast. So it's not particularly good. So I decided to make one for myself, a manual one, uh, where I can just turn the little knob here and if I have it set on 65, I've got full air conditioning. If I turn it down toward the middle, I got a mix. And if I turn it all the way down to 85, I got full heat. On this particular day, the heat didn't come on, but it would if it was colder outside of the engine was running. So, um, anyways, <clears throat> so I decided to make my own. And this is the, the as they call the amplifier. Uh, this is a little brown thing that lives inside of the left-hand side of the center console. Um, you've got to take this out because you're going to need the this pigtail here uh, to do the little project that I have in mind. So I just get these things, chop them off, and uh, get myself a usable pigtail. This is the servo unit that the uh, Bell and Air air conditioning unit uses. It's really neat. It has all the little switches and valves and controls and uh, cams. It pulls and closes the uh, uh, the valves, the air doors, and such stuff as that. Uh, this is an early, a kind of a middle prototype of, uh, of what I was working on. And kind of in last year, two, three years ago, I made this one. I actually had a circuit board made. Uh, this particular one uses relays like this. And this is a partially populated board. As you can see, it's also uh, uh, something of a prototype. I was just trying to make it do something. I forgot what it was. <coughs> anyway, um, this is uh, an L. 298N is the motor control you can buy on Amazon. Uh, this is my latest project, and this thing costs about five bucks. It's very, very cool. Um, love the way it works. It's a dual motor controller. We only need one. And this is an, an early version of it. Um, first one that I made. Um, put it together, and, uh, and it actually works too. Uh, this is uh, the latest one. This one's ready to go in the car. Um, you see I have the pigtail that I took off of the um, of the old amplifier uh, connected to this thing. This um, You also need the little, okay, and this is the circuit board uh, that I use. It's just a standard um, copper clad perf board. Um, works very nicely for this type of project. And down here you see the three power supply connections. The lower one is a positive five volt, you don't use that, but the other two you're gonna need. The, um, um, this is um, the black one that's gonna go to the negative and, um, and the brown wire there is, all, is the one that goes to the positive. So when I put it in the car, those two would be connected and I could just connect it straight into the car. Okay, so now I've got it powered up and uh, also you can see And here it is powered up. The, um, when I turn the knob one way, the uh, motor runs one direction. When I turn it back in the other direction, it runs in the other direction. So it'll go all the way in one direction or the other, or it'll stop in the middle, depending on where I put the control. And here is the control. Um, So no matter what temperature I set it at, it will go to that temperature and stop. So that's what I want. So full manual control. So it'll go from full hot to full cold or anywhere in between, depending on where you turn the knob. Okay, this is the schematic. Uh, over here on the left, you see I have a um, pair of Zener diodes in series with a 100 ohm resistor. They go straight across the power supply. Uh, plus 12 on top, uh, ground on the bottom. This gives me a double-ended 5-volt power supply, so I have a plus or minus 5, plus a 0-volt neutral, which the TL082, uh, which is the op amp I use, needs. <coughs> a TL081 is probably a better choice because it um, this is a dual op amp, and we don't really need the second one, so I use these 10K resistors on pin 5, 6, and 7 down here to keep it from floating. 
So basically, I'm only using one op amp out of a pair of dual ones. This uh, R5 here is a 10K resistor. It is used uh, to set the null time, so the time when it's neither on nor off. Without this, the thing would just flip back and forth between, the pos uh, between positive and negative. Up here is the 10K. Um, the, what you have is a pair of uh, voltage dividers. You have a 10K pot here. Um, which is the controller in the car uh, that you use to set your temperature with. And it's connected down below here. Going down there. Okay, connected down, down below to the, um, the non-inverting input and another 10K resistor uh, connected to ground. Gives you one voltage divider. The other one is a 2K pot, which is actually on the servo itself. This is the feedback pot on the servo connected to a 2.2 and connected to the inverting input, uh, which basically gives me just a pair of voltage dividers. If we unbalance either one of those, uh, then the output here on pin one uh, will flip either to high or low. If they're balanced, it'll stay on zero. So that's, that's the whole idea of the way this thing works. <coughs> Excuse me. The, um, the output on pin one it goes over to these two optocouplers. And the way they're configured is if it goes high, uh, it causes U3 on the bottom to conduct. And if it goes low, it will cause U2 uh, up on the top to conduct. So depending on which one is conducting, the optocoupler will pull its output low, and that low will be fed over to the 298N, one of the pins over there. So uh, it works either way. So if either one of them goes low, it'll cause the motor to drive in one direction or the other, depending on which one goes low. So long as the two inputs are the same, the motor driver doesn't do anything. If they're different, uh, it'll drive in one direction or the other. So basically how it works is you just have, um, you have a comparator and then um, flips high or low, drives the optic upwards in one direction or the other. And that's it. The LM298N is a really, really neat little thing. And we only use one half of it. It's also a dual thing. So you can use either side that you want. It doesn't really matter. So basically, you have a comparator. And you uh, unbalance one side of it. Uh, the motor will run until it balances. And so the feedback pod is what does that. And so <coughs> it'll cause one or the other to go high, the other go low. And when it does, uh, the motor controller will uh, spin the motor in one direction or the other. And anywhere you see a color on this chart is the color set on the pigtail. So up here we have um, the brown bar here will go to the positive, the black bar goes to the negative, and then that's it. So not very complicated, um, very simple circuit actually. And what it does is it gives you manual control over your heat, which is a um, very desirable feature. So. Anyway, that's about it. Um, you guys take care. Stay cool or warm, whatever the case may be. And um, happy winter.